Welcome back to the Gridiron Expert. As we all know, the College Football Playoff Committee released their second set of rankings entering Week 11 this past Tuesday. And much like we did last year, we're going to try to break down and analyze these rankings just about every week and kind of share our thoughts and see if we agree or disagree with the committee's decisions. And I will say that I kind of have a love-hate relationship with the College Football Playoff Committee. I know they've cycled through uh, plenty of members since it began in 2014. And I will say that since 2014, I believe that the committee has always gotten the top four teams correct. I think they've always put the top four deserving teams into the College Football Playoff, uh, and there really hasn't been much debate there. I know last year you can make the argument between Alabama and Ohio State, but I think they got it right. Uh, putting the Crimson Tide in there. But for me, it's what happens outside of the top four uh, that really irritates me and where I think there's a little bit of biasness and a little bit of laziness on the committee's part. And some people will say, well, why does it even matter? The committee is there to you know, put the top four teams in. Why does it matter what happens to five through 25? Uh, and that matters for a lot of reasons. It matters for strength of schedule. It matters for these guys like a Georgia or an Oklahoma or even the teams in the top four. If you if the committee puts someone in there and they say number 15, like Florida, uh, that, that's a good resume booster for Georgia, just so they have a, a solid ranked team that they have beaten on their resume. So those other rankings matter. It's not just the top four. If we want to go by that, we could just say the committee can rank the top four teams and five through 25 should be ranked uh, with the AP poll. Why don't we just do that? Uh, so we're going to break down uh, whether we agree or disagree with what the committee did going into week 11. Like I said, we'll be doing this every week uh, until the, the final rankings have come out in December. Uh, so right now, if the playoffs were to happen today, it would be number one Alabama going up against number four Michigan and number two Clemson going up against number three Notre Dame. Uh, both of those, I feel like, would be very exciting games. And if I had to choose right now, I would probably end up saying we would have another, uh, what would it be, part four now between Alabama and Clemson. I think those are uh, without a doubt, are your top two teams in the entire nation right now. Rounding out the top ten, you have Georgia at five, Oklahoma at six, LSU at seven, Washington State at eight, West Virginia at nine, and Ohio State at ten. So those are your top ten teams, and maybe you can make a case, probably right there is where it's going to end, is, are your top ten teams that maybe have a shot at making the college football playoff. Everybody else from 11 down is certainly out. I mean, Kentucky a two-loss team out of the SEC East, uh, out of the SEC title race after their loss to Georgia this past weekend. They're done. Central Florida is not going to make a run for the playoff. They're done. Uh, Syracuse, so on and so forth. It's just not going to happen. So these are your top ten teams that have a legitimate shot at the cultural playoff. Even if it's small, they have a legitimate shot at making it. The SEC leads the way once again with seven teams in this top 25 rankings, followed by the Big Ten with five, the ACC with four, the Big 12 also with four, and the Pac-12 with two. We have two group of five schools in there with Central Florida at 12 and Fresno State at 23, and Notre Dame, obviously the lone independent, coming in at number three, the undefeated Fighting Irish. So like I said, I agree with the top four right now, with the way it stands. I think they've got it right. Uh, and if the playoffs were to happen today, I would be happy with the way those are uh, looking right now. But we're going to break down some other ones. Uh, one thing I need to say is I do not believe that Auburn or Penn State should be ranked right now. I think both of them should be out. Uh, both of these schools, are, I believe, are three lost teams. Penn State uh, having three losses, Auburn having three losses, the Nittany Lions losing 42-7 to to Michigan this past Saturday. Uh, certainly not worthy uh, of staying in the top uh, 25 to me after a 35-point beat down to a good Michigan team, no doubt. They're number four for a reason, but when you get beat that bad, and I can't remember what Penn State was ranked, 15th, 13th, somewhere around there, uh, I, I think it was a, it was very generous for the committee to keep them in uh, because if you look at Penn State's resume, they haven't beaten anybody uh, of high caliber. They lost to Ohio State. Close loss, good loss, yes, but still. They lost to Michigan State, who is still ahead of the Nittany Lions, uh, and then they lost to, uh, to Michigan. So not bad losses by any means, all of those opponents uh, being ranked right now, but I just, do, I just don't agree with them being, with still being in uh, the top 25. And then Auburn, same thing. Where's their resume booster? Who, who have they beaten? that makes them worthy of being in the top 25. I know they're 24th. They're not in any, they're not in the SEC title race. They're not in the college football playoff race. I get that. But who have they beat? They, everybody will point to last week saying, well, they beat number 20 Texas A&M. Sure. It's a very solid win, without a doubt. And it was a great come from behind victory for the Tigers, no doubt. But besides that, who have they beat? Washington, who's 25, who maybe even shouldn't be ranked themselves, uh, who narrowly beat Stanford, who's been a ma major disappointment. Washington themselves also being a major disappointment. Uh, they lost to LSU. Auburn did. Uh, I, I would assume they're going to lose to Georgia this weekend, although we can't assume anything yet. Uh, but Auburn just hasn't beaten the teams that they, you know, of, high, of higher caliber that, in my opinion, makes them worthy to be in the top 25. That's just my thought there. Uh, we're going to jump into the group of five a little bit. 
as I mentioned, there's only two teams in there right now, Central Florida at 12 and Fresno State at 23. And it is Central Florida's uh, bid to lose for the New Year's Six Bowl game. It is their game to lose. They are the highest ranked team out of the group of five. If they can win out, they are going to another, another New Year's Six Bowl game. And I would love to see who they go up against. I'd love to see uh, Florida to continue to win, maybe win out, finish 9-3, and three, maybe slip in there. Or maybe a Kentucky versus Central Florida. I'd love to see Central Florida go up against another SEC school because they beat Auburn last year. Can they do it again? Could they be another decent SEC opponent? Who would that who would that would be? I don't know. Would it be LSU? Would it be Kentucky, Florida? Someone like that. I don't wouldn't care. I'd just like to see it. Uh, but Central Florida still has tough games against South Florida and Cincinnati. So if they were to slip up somewhere down the road, either in these next three games or in the conference championship game. Could you see Fresno State, if they continue to win, rise up and maybe jump the Knights uh, and then go to, the, to go, them go to a New Year's Six Bowl game? So that's always something you have to keep your eye on there. And last year we had a couple uh, group of five teams that were very uh, closer ranked than Central Florida and Fresno State are right now. But like I said, it, it's Central Florida's to lose. Uh, if they win out, which I think they probably will, uh, they're going to a New Year's Six Bowl game. Even if they lose in a close game to Cincinnati or South Florida, I could see them dropping a number of spots, but still staying enough above Fresno State to have a shot at making that New Year's Six Bowl game. So that's something to keep your eye on there, but nothing uh, that I would be too concerned about if you were a Central Florida fan. Uh, one thing that I do like that the committee has done is that and you can see how much emphasis they put on head-to-head -head, uh, matchups, how much they put on uh, who won the head-to-head -head meetings. I mean, you can even look all the way down here, 24-25. Uh, Washington had is seven and three. I think Auburn six and three, something like that. Uh, and maybe Washington has better wins than Auburn in, in some people's opinion. But Auburn beat Washington the season opener, therefore they're ranked ahead of them. Iowa beat Iowa State in the regular season, therefore they're ranked ahead of them. Michigan State and Penn State. Uh, you've got, I mean, there's a number of Michigan and Notre Dame. Notre Dame ranked ahead of Michigan, even though Michigan's playing some phenomenal football right now. Same goes for the Fighting Irish, but Michigan. Uh, maybe, I mean, I would be curious to see a rematch between these two schools right now to see who would win that game. But Notre Dame got the win. They're undefeated, uh, and, and they certainly deserve to be ranked ahead of Michigan. They're putting that head-to-head -head emphasis there. I almost thought for a second there was a chance that the playoff committee would have thrown Michigan with that dominant win over Penn State and Notre Dame only beating Northwestern by 10, that they could have thrown Michigan ahead of the Fighting Irish. But I'm glad they didn't. That was a good call by them. Head-to-head -head matchups and head-to-head -head, uh, results matter a lot when it comes down to these college football playoff rankings. And the two other things I want to touch on are number eight and number nine, Washington State and West Virginia. Is there a chance that these two schools could crack the top four? Now, they're going to have to have some help, without a doubt. But let's talk about Washington State for a second. Only a one-loss team to USC, that game coming much earlier in the season by three points. And USC, a good team, a decent team. They're not great by any means, but they're not horrible. Uh, have a chance to go to the Pac-12 championship game and potentially face off against Washington State. If the Cougars were to win out, and beat Utah or USC or whoever it may be in the Pac-12 championship game, will the committee leave out a one-loss Washington State squad? And that's something that we have to think about. I mean, if you look at their resume, who they've beaten here in the rankings, I can't, I'm looking at the top of my head. Uh, they would beat Washington, assuming Washington wins out and remains ranked. Uh, they have had to face off in the Apple Cup to close things out. Uh, but besides that, they're, you know, I just mentioned there are only two Pac-12 teams ranked, Washington State and Washington. So it, that, that resume and that strength of schedule is going to be key for the Cougars. But it'll be really interesting to see a, a potential 11-1 Washington State squad. Will they be left out? Uh, they would certainly deserve to be above LSU. Uh, they would certainly deserve to be over a two-loss uh, Oklahoma or three-loss Oklahoma if Oklahoma were to, were to drop that West Virginia game and then lose again. Uh, in the Big 12 championship game if they were to make that. So it's going to be interesting to see how the committee runs that. Same for West Virginia. Also only a one-loss squad to a good Iowa State uh, team who is still technically in the hunt for the Big 12 championship game. We cannot overlook that by any means. Iowa State is still in the hunt for the Big 12 championship game. But West Virginia's lone loss coming to them by 16, though, if they were to win out, which would include another win over or would include a win over Oklahoma in the season finale, and then potentially beat Oklahoma again in the Big 12 championship game, or Texas, or Iowa State, someone along those lines, could you see West Virginia slipping in there? Very dynamic offense, not a bad loss to an Iowa State squad, assuming they can continue to win. Is there a chance, if you beat Oklahoma twice or you beat Texas twice in one year, I think you can make a very solid chance, or a very solid case for West Virginia getting into that top four. So uh, this, that's why these top, this top 10 is so interesting and why November is such a crucial month because anything can happen in college football and 
it's very possible that you could see a team down here like Ohio State, West Virginia, or Washington State slip in to the top four, so it means they have some help along the way. That's something we really have to keep our mind, uh, our eye on as we go through this. LSU is technically still alive for the college football playoff, as some people say, but they're a two-loss team. They're not going to play for the SEC championship. I don't see any way the Tigers can get in there. I'm actually surprised after their 29 to nothing beat down uh, that they remained ahead of teams like Washington State and West Virginia, who pulled out a gutsy win on the road against number 19 Texas now. Uh, so I, I was very shocked to see that. So LSU's out of the race. I can't imagine them slipping into the top four, but we have seen crazier things happen in college football. So this is kind of our, our first initial look at the college football playoff rankings. I know we didn't do it on week 10 when they initially came out, their first set, uh, but we're going to try to do this every week and hopefully get these out quicker. Either that Tuesday night they do come out or at least by Wednesday night. So that's going to be our goal here. Uh, but I do think the committee's got it right for now. Will it stay that way over the course of the rest of the season? We'll have to find out. Make sure you stay tuned next week when we break down the Week 12 college football playoff rankings. So as always, please go check us out on Twitter at Gridiron Expert and always here on YouTube. Please continue to like, comment, and subscribe. And we will see you next time on the Gridiron Expert.